Hello everyone and welcome to The Chrissy B Show. Today is an important day because we're going to join in the celebrations of International Literacy Day, which happens on the 8th of September every year. This event was started by UNESCO, the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, over 40 years ago in order to remind the international community that literacy, which is the ability to read and write, is a human right and the foundation of all learning. Now, in some first world countries like the UK, being able to read and write is probably taken for granted because here we have all the opportunity to learn from a very young age at school. But not everyone in the world has that same privilege. There are others out there who have to fight for their right to go to school, like Malala, the Pakistani activist for female education. Malala, if you remember, was shot trying to go to school, as where she was from in Pakistan, the local Taliban had banned girls from attending school. Then there are others who aren't educated because their families can't afford to send them to school. And then there are those who travel miles and miles every day just to be able to learn something so that they can one day have a better life for themselves and their loved ones. So tonight we want to focus on the importance and value of education. And here's what you guys have been saying on this subject. Derville McClote says, 25% of children in the UK have reading difficulties. How does that happen? System failure, teacher failure. Alyssa Rene says, reading is to the mind what exercise is to the body. I love reading. And Catherine Johnson says, say after me, dyslexia has nothing to do with a lack of intellect. Thought of the day. Natasha Desborough says, I've said this before and I'll say it again. Boys like reading as much as girls, but parents need to find the right books for their sons. And Michael says, the literate should be waging war on illiteracy. Now in the studio tonight, in celebration of International Literacy Day, we've invited Dyslexia Actions Policy Research and Communications Officer Stephanie Anderson and the Book Bus Charities trustee and founder David Gordon to talk, us, to, talk to us about what they do to help tackle illiterate related problems. And later on, I'll be joined by coach Chris Brown, who will discuss with us how important education is in regards to finding a job and also how vital it is to continue to learn, develop and be trained in the workplace. Plus, I'll be sharing with you my top tips on how to grab opportunities to learn. But first, it's news with Jenny Cortez Ibanez. Hello, Jenny. Hi, Chris. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, good, thank you for having me again. So, literacy, mm -hmm. awesome, awesome uh, topic to cover on the show again. It's, I think it's really important that we yeah. do this. So, having done my re research, not a great start, so not some very good news to start off with. So, illiteracy will, co will cost global economy $1.2 trillion wow. in 2015. That's um, a report that's come out in The Guardian, mm -hmm. uh, but it was done by the World Literacy Foundation. And they say that almost 800 million people worldwide who can't read or write um, actually are going to be trapped in a cycle of poverty. Mm -hmm. So some more uh, statistics. More than 796 million people are either completely illiterate, so that means they can't read or write, or functionally illiterate, which means they can't perform basic, basic tasks such as you know, reading a medical label, mm -hmm. um, according to the report. So people in rich and poor countries who have these illiteracy problems will probably have limited opportunities for employment, which will mm. obviously affect their income generation. So rich countries lose some $898 billion every year due to literacy, uh, workforce literacy problems, which can reduce business productivity, so it's not great for the business world, mm -hmm. um, while emerging economies lose $294 billion, according to the report. So in regards to the countries, the US is projected to lose $362.49 billion in 2015 wow. alone, more than any other country, and there was lots of countries on the list, but um, don't have time to go through all of them, but the UK mm -hmm. is losing $57 billion in 2015 because yeah. of illiteracy problems. And other developing countries with the biggest projections um, out from um, Bangladesh with $1 billion and Angola with $530 million. So the report also says that illiterate people can earn up to 42% less than those who can read. Wow. 
which is a massive, massive percentage. And they can't do things such as, again, what I mentioned earlier, reading a medicine label, um, reading a nutritional label on a food product, which mm -hmm. can lead to other problems we'll mention later on. Simple things like balancing a checkbook, filling out a job application, reading a bank statement, and working out the correct change at a supermarket. So these are things that... You don't sort of think about no, it, do you? But it, when... We take imagine, it granted. Yeah, it's true. But these people can't do it. So uh, really, really a problem. Um, mm. Illiteracy can also result to other th uh, problems, such as poor health, hygiene and nutrition, high risk and sexual... Uh, high risk in sexual behaviour due to lack of awareness, of course, mm -hmm. and more workplace accidents. And you're probably thinking, so what is the solution? It's actually very simple, Chris. The solution, according to the report, is for children's reading skills to be improved at an earlier um, stage or age mm -hmm. to combat this illiteracy problem. So we should really focus our attention in children and primary schools and early education, um, which hopefully I'm sure lots of you know different governments are doing but yeah. I think more needs to be done clearly mm -hmm. um, to sort of save the future I guess um, so so in regards to that around 57 million children do not have access to primary school education an improvement in two of uh, in 2000 when 100 million children were thought to be out of school Ah, staggering. Crazy, crazy numbers. Literacy rate among young people aged between 15 and 24 has increased, which is good, globally, globally from 83% in 1990 to 91% this year. And again, the, the, the resolution to this is to focus in children and mm. in primary schools, but not just making sure that these children go to school, but they stay in school and finish their education. Mm. That's also very, very important. Um, and in regards to you know tackling these problems, there are actually people out there trying to do something about it, which is great, of yeah. course, such as uh, these couple of people, Education Secretary Nick Morgan and children's author and comedian David Williams. They've launched a new campaign recently, um, and their plans are to create at least 200 new book clubs across the country mm -hmm. uh, and the campaign aims to see every eight-year-old enrolled in their local library which is obviously great and this will be wonderful yeah will hopefully support get people off the computer games and <laughs> reading more and exactly yeah. I mean that's exactly like what you were saying earlier how we actually take for granted the opportunities we have to learn mm -hmm. and I think these days children are very um, they all, they're always either at, uh, you know, on their computer games, they're online, they've got all these yeah. gadgets, so they're consumed by all of this, and they forgot that you know, actually the important thing to do is start reading after mm. school, um, which is actually something that also came out. So uh, a report said that one in seven young people aged 8 to 16 rarely or never read outside of school. Really? Which is... Which is I remember, I just, so as we bring back memories as yeah. you're talking, because I remember um, at school we had this little library, and I remember just picking out the books that I wanted and then they put it in this little brown paper bag and I used to be so excited to go home and yeah. start reading. It was like these adventure books and things which I absolutely loved. Yeah. So it's really sad to hear that, that they don't... Exactly, you know and I mean, mean, you said earlier um, how you know third world countries you know, would do anything mm. to, to children from third world countries would do anything yeah. to you know, be educated. And you know, I, I come from the Philippines, so I've seen, you know, I've been at home and I've seen it firsthand what it's like for children to be able to go to school. So there's the children that you know, literally would do anything, but their parents just can't afford to send oh, them to school. So um, and if they can, if they turn up to school and they have a piece of their uniform that is not correct, their shoe might be bit broken mm. they can't afford to buy new ones they get sent home because oh. they don't have the correct uniform yeah. or maybe it's their top or something there's other children that you know you know walk thousands or not thousands rather hundreds yeah. of miles just to get to school and there are those children that I've seen that actually have to cross rivers they just swim from one island to the other just to get to a school uh, a primary school um, and there's you know heart really Good people out there that have actually provided. I saw they've uh, in a program they provided um, a little boat um, oh, and a person nice. to just, just yeah, get yeah, just them from them one island to the other, uh, and many other stories. But I think it's something that we really do take for granted sometimes because we it's do. free for first, first world countries. It's free from you know from primary school to um, you know university. You know unless it's a private school, of mm. course. So yeah, really, and it's just so many sad. issues related to it as well because obviously if you don't. Uh, learn to read and write and for whatever reason 
it does lead to mental health issues afterwards because then you start to sort of realise how restricted you are and yeah. how you you know there's certain things that you can't do. But at the same time, it's never to, as we always say, it's never too yeah. late to change. It's never too late to learn. Yeah. Especially here in the UK, there is help. You yeah. can you know even as an adult learn to read and write. It's not too late to do that. Yeah. So you know I think that's important to, to stress that as well. Or also you know if you if you feel stuck, you will it will affect how you feel about yourself as well. Exactly. Um, so moving on to some of celebrities and public figures um, talking about... Can you do uh, it in one minute? One minute, okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, gosh. So uh, Ben Young, England yeah. rugby player, recently came out saying how he, when he was younger, he, um, he suffered from having dyslexia. Mm -hmm. And speaking in front of a class um, was his, basically his worst nightmare. Uh, yeah. But he turned to rugby. He turned to uh, playing his you know, favourite sport in order to be able to express himself or he can mm -hmm. do in paper which was really um, uh, fascinating. Um, c celebrities who, liter who you know, support campaigns and charities um, in, in, in regards to literacy. Princess Beatrice is the first junior ambassador for children okay. in crisis, mm -hmm. which aims to educate children in the poorest countries. Um, she's also involved with Springboard for Children, who, which provides literacy support for disadvantaged children, which is um, good, because I don't think she... And your time's up. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, That's plenty more. All right. <laughs> but we'll put it on your website. <laughs> yes, we definitely will. Okay, thank you so, so much, Jenny. Thank, thank you. Thank you. We'll see you again next time. Well, up next, we're going to be meeting two very special people from some lovely charities, and they'll be telling us about the work they do to help people. So don't go away. Hi, I'm Chrissy B and my show is all about improving your mental health and being happy. Join me every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 10pm on my channel Sky203. Visit chrissybshow.tv for more information and subscribe to our YouTube channel Chrissy B Show. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Chrissy B Show and on our Facebook page The Chrissy B Show. Welcome back, and if you've just joined us today, we're celebrating International Literacy Day, which is on the 8th of September every year. And right now, we're joined by Policy Research Officer from Dyslexia Action, Stephanie Anderson, and Trustee and Director from the Book Bus Charity, David Gordon, who are both going to talk about the special work their charities do. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. How are you. you both? Good, thank you fine, very much. Fine. So lovely to have you here. So as, as we heard earlier, some like really shocking statistics I would say and obviously it does affect uh, people around the world and business and everything like that so what what do you both do to help people let's start off with you Stephanie okay well dyslexia action is a national charity which exists to support children young people and adults with literacy and numeracy difficulties dyslexia mm and other specific learning difficulties. Right. Um, it's been established for over 40 years and um, is uh, uh, in, in 100 different locations throughout the UK. Okay. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, so we have um, specialist teachers and educational psychologists that mm. support um, educators and teachers that support individuals um, mm. from primary age right up to um, pensioners um, from all walks of life, mm -hmm. from farmers and businessmen to um, people from the emergency services and the um, armed forces. Yeah. Um, so anyone that comes to us that needs, that feels they have dyslexia um, but aren't quite sure and perhaps wants um, an assessment or for those people that are struggling with literary difficulties and need some extra support to mm. help to read or write. Um, and um, you know, there are lots of co-occurring difficulties as well. Yeah. Um, with some, it can it can vary um, in in from mild dyslexia to severe dyslexia. Mm -hmm. Some can have co-occurring difficulties with dyscalculia, dysgraphia, um, ADHD. Um, so there it's are a whole range, um, a whole range mm. of um, difficulties. And mm. and obviously, if um, someone can't learn to read and write. Um, then there's sort of the issue with sort of self-esteem, lack of confidence, yes. mm -hmm. and the self-efficacy can just can really plummet. Mm -hmm. So what we do as a charity is is sort of provide advice mm -hmm. to to parents to how they can support their children. We provide advice to schools 
Um, we provide advice if we feel that um, there's gaps in, in government policy. Um, okay. We provide advice um, just across the board. Um, Which you know, is great. On, so on there's the always somewhere that, some, that people can turn to because they don't have to sort of stay feeling that way just because, you know, they, they learn differently to other people which is really, really good to hear. Yes, yeah, certainly, okay. exactly. I mean, it is a, a, a neurological processing difficulty mm -hmm. and it, it stems from um, um, not processing the sounds in words. Yeah. And um, so we strive to sort of raise awareness amongst teaching staff to, to um, so they are aware that um, not all children learn the same yeah. and that there are other alternative um, interventions yeah. available um, and um, there is, training available. Um, I mean so it is frustrating even with someone for example that doesn't have dyslexia because I remember at school I'm, I'm a person that needs to see and do things for me to learn. I find it really difficult when I'm just getting information and trying to memorise things I can't learn that way and I remember some teachers that's the only way they would teach and then I used, I used to think oh, I'm pretty dumb because I don't understand and I can't sort of retain things but it's just different ways of learning it's just for different people. And how about you you've got a fantastic charity as well can you tell us about it? Yes, well the book bus, well we're an international charity, we're based here in the UK but most of our work is overseas okay. and we work in Africa and South America and it's to improve child literacy rates just by making reading fun. Mm -hmm. So it's giving access to books, it's providing books, materials, resources to schools where there are very few of those things mm -hmm. and it's encouraging the children to read through fun activities, um, uh, mentoring uh, yeah. and also working with teachers and parents to encourage children to read outside of school. It's really trying Which to come back. Which is one of the problems that we have here in the UK when people, kids aren't reading after school for some reason. Yeah, it's pretty global actually. Um, yeah. We were set up to work mainly in, in developing world countries where you know, some of the statistics which we heard earlier on in the program are, mm -hmm. are pretty damning actually and um, it's giving help to those societies where, there's, where they have very little. Mm. But it's a very uplifting program. And where did the idea come from? Where did the, the, the actual idea the to idea, do this come from? The book it's bus was set up now. Yes, we have a very um, noble and, uh, and fine man who set us up. Tom Mashler set the book bus up in 2006. Okay. And he's a publisher and he spent his, well, his life publishing books for children, mm -hmm. mainly for consumption in this, in this country. And when Tom retired, he decided to buy a big bus, fill it up with books. He put 5,000 books in the bus. Wow. And it was set to go to Africa. Yeah. The bus is beautiful. It was designed by Quentin Blake. He did all the artwork on the mm -hmm. outside. So it really is a really stunning piece of moving <laughs> fun. <buddy. laughs> moving fun, that's what I like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, someone described it very well as wisdom on wheels. It has so much inside. Oh. And um, it just brings joy to the African villages and to the South American kids. Um, and for many of them, it's the first time they've had a chance to read a book, you know. Wow. And so it, it's, it's really quite, it, it creates a big change in their lives. It's That's got real brilliant. potential. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what, what do you think about the, the situation, uh, like here in, in the UK, for example, where how, how do you think we can encourage more kids to sort of read more and just be more interested instead of computer games and Facebook and all, all that kind of stuff? What do you think we can do? <laughs> it's hard. Sure, sure. Dyslexia Action has actually produced a book guide so it's worked with the publisher um, mm. to uh, recommend to parents and teachers a selection of books that are likely to grab a uh, youngster's attention mm. or a, a boy's interests. Um, and um, th these are chosen for, for different reasons, so there, there is a book guide and I think we're going to... We'll to, 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 yeah. to converse on that. Oh, yeah. So. Okay. Yes, oh, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. really good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 So there are books that w that are recommended as yeah. uh, perhaps easy read or. Okay. I remember. I don't know if you remember. I don't know if they still do these books. Remember the choose your own adventure books. And you'd have you'd be reading this story, and then you'd get these three choices yes, yeah, at the yeah. end. And I, I used to be hooked on those, yeah. Because then the you'd make a choice, and then it would mm. just take you to a different page of the book, and then it would be like a whole different story and a whole different outcome. Yeah. I used to love that. My nine-year-old son loves those. Books. <laughs> oh, they still yeah. do them then. Yes. Oh, do they? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and how about um, around around the world? That obviously you've you've seen for yourself. Sure, sure. And what's the difference between the kids abroad and then maybe here in the UK? Are we just a bit spoiled over here? Do you think? It's just the way we've developed, I guess, and 
other parts of the world have developed in different ways. Mm. I wouldn't like to say we're more advanced in any way than the others, but um, I think the important thing is to recognise the differences. But one of the one of the big differences is that the uh, what, what the children overseas have available is much less than the children here. Mm -hmm. So when we do present them with a busload of books, they just go absolutely bananas and oh. they love it. And you just can't stop them from, even if they can't read, they don't even know which is the upside, which is the front and which is the back. They just want to handle something new. So it's a real novelty for them just to hold the book. Yeah. And that gives us a really good starting point because then we start from the very beginning by saying this is the front and this is the back. and. You know, it's, it, it really is oh, starting so from nice. scratch. And that's very, it's kind of uplifting because the children um, are fascinated by books yeah. and the pictures inside and the drawings. And um, it's, um, it, it, it just gives us a way of providing them with, with the potential to, you know, literacy is the cornerstone of education. Mm -hmm. So it's a way of just giving them a real springboard to get their education moving yeah. along. And that's what's going to give them a better, better opportunity in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how, how do you both feel, sort of, in, in your line of work and stuff? And when you when you see, for example, in your case, um, Stephanie, when someone is feeling a bit down, or like you said to me earlier, some people get really, really depressed about not being able to to read and write or learn in the same way that other people do, and then actually being able to help people in some way. Well, how does that make you both feel? Well, our, our staff do an absolutely fantastic job encouraging, um, as I say, youngsters up to. Um, uh, well, I think the last person I met. Um, was was had just sort of celebrated his 80th birthday, wow. and um, he'd only literally just started to read um, mm. a year ago, and that was thanks That's to amazing, isn't it? to being told about dyslexia, and he didn't even know that there was that support available. So it was kind of getting through the door um, and opening his eyes that there was still a sort of an opportunity and, and, and ways for him to learn. Um, and I think it's kind of the encouragement that is really essential. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the most important sort of uh, that friends and family um, understand and support um, the person that, that yeah. has dyslexia. Mm -hmm. um, there are some, some, some really heart-rending stories throughout the country. I mean, with, we have catch-up clubs going on in libraries and churches mm -hmm. um, and people uh, are coming in with their with the young children in, and, and they're actually learning to read with their children where they perhaps don't or they don't have oh, the wow. courage to go into school and um, uh, talk to the to, talk to the teacher mm. um, but we always do recommend that um, that if, if there is a difficulty um, presenting itself with a child not being able to to read yeah. or and, and there are sort of signs and I can kind of come revisit some of those signs in a moment, but um, we always recommend they speak to the classroom teacher first, mm. um, and or the school senko, okay. and um, you know they will be very yeah. understanding. That's lovely. Love your job. Oh, I've got the best job. In the world. <laughs> yeah, I can but tell when he was talking about the books and everything. Yeah. But when you think about a book, I mean, a book can be a great tool for bringing people together because a book is yeah. just full of, you know, it's full of characters, stories, and yeah. experiences, and all those things which can be shared. It's true. And if we all three read the same book, we could spend, you know, the next six evenings talking about those characters. Good, so yeah. it's a good social. I mean, you talk about you know a sense of well-being and, and and giving people confidence. I think having that common interest in the book as a as a focal point. Mm. It gives people a lot of really good reasons just to communicate for a start, Definitely even if it's a, a total stranger. And then from there grows your self-confidence yeah, and your definitely. ability to connect with other people and, and other parts of the world. And even through the book, you connect with the author and all of his experiences. So there's no doubt books are powerful things. And yeah. if you can read them, it's even better. Brilliant. <laughs> guys, I have to leave it. They've run out of time. I thank you so, so much for telling us all about your charities. And actually, guys, if you want to learn more about these two wonderful charities, to be, please do head over to our website, chrissybshow.tv. Thank you so much. All right, guys, so if you have a story you want to share that can help inspire and motivate others, then please do get in touch again via our website, chrissybshow.tv, or let us know your thoughts or advice on this subject by tweeting us at chrissybshow or commenting on our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. Don't go away because after the break, I'll be joined by our resident coach, Chris Brown, to discuss why education is still ever so important when looking to get a good job and how vital it is to be able to continue to learn, develop and be trained in the workplace. Plus, I'll be sharing with you my own tips on how to grab opportunities to learn, so make sure you don't miss those. We'll be right back only here on The Chrissy B Show.
Hi, I'm Chrissy B and my show is all about improving your mental health and being happy. Join me every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 10 p.m. on my channel Sky 203. Visit chrissybshow.tv for more information and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Chrissy B Show. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Chrissy B Show and on our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. Hello everyone and welcome back to International Literacy Day here at the Chrissy B Show. Earlier we met Stephanie Anderson from Dyslexia Action and trustee and director from the Book Bus charity David Gordon who both talked about the special work their charities do. And again for more information on those charities please head over to our website chrissybshow.tv. And now we're joined by our resident coach Chris Brown. Hello Chris. Hi Chrissy. How are you? I am very well thanks. It's great. International Literacy Day? Yeah. Brilliant stuff. Brilliant now stuff. you're all about learning, aren't you? Because you I'm are a coach learning, and yep. you help people back into work and yep. like, um, you encourage training and stuff. But what did you think of our, of our two charities earlier? I thought it was brilliant. They're doing brilliant work. Um, there are so many people in need at this time. When we talk about literacy, yeah. we're not just talking about um, education. <coughs> it goes back to the same saying we said, um, give a man a fish and get, feed him for a day. Or, mm -hmm. you know, what's the other one? Teach him to fish. Feed yeah. Community yeah. for life, right? Now, the thing about it is this we really need to raise the level because there are many people slipping through nets who actually need that help, and these charities yeah. are actually doing that. And the blocks that are in the way, like I heard earlier on, they're saying about um, someone's self esteem, the yeah. way they feel, yeah. and hiding it all the time. You know, and it's funny because when she said that, I thought about someone I know, and I remember having a go at this person about. Every time I sent an email, you didn't send back this, that, and the other, and it took me a while. I said to my wife, mentioned that, hang on, have you ever thought maybe why? And it's being aware of others' needs at the same time, why you don't actually get his emails or whatever. You know, it okay. could be in many ways literacy. So it's important. But mm. International Literacy Day is not only about that, we're talking about educating worldwide, aren't we? Mm. We're talking, I was looking at the other day, I was talking about educating about hepatitis, things like this, um, different health problems, all these other areas as well. And it's, it's good. I will champion it all the way. Yeah. It's brilliant, you okay. know. And sometimes we don't know if there's, <coughs> you know, an area in our thinking, our literacy that we need to actually help on mm. us at the same time as well. That's so right. it highlights quite a lot. Now, taking that further, working in the environment of helping those back to work, yeah. it comes up quite a bit now does and it? then as well. Yeah. yeah, it does come up quite okay. a bit, um, especially when it comes to applications and these sort of areas, and you look at something you realise, but you've got to think about it. The employer's looking at it as well at the same time. So This is the thing, because when you, obviously when you apply for a job and you know your empl the employer's got so many CVs and stuff, and if right. they notice like a spelling mistake... Yeah. or something, something like the grammar mistake or something yeah. like that. If, you, if it's difficult to choose between candidates, as an employee, it automatically could get rid of the ones that has maybe the spelling mistakes and it doesn't sound right and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't, this it's not it. as good as the other one. But the person might even be a better candidate for that exactly. position, but because of the way the CV's written and things like that, then, you know, it, it's to their detriment really, isn't it? Unless it is. they specify before, maybe in a cover letter, I have a learning difficulty, but I don't know if that would work against them. That's the other side right. of things. Right, um, give and take. I suppose it can now and then work against, mm. but um, you can always learn. Let's face it, at the end of the day, the job market is a very competitive field, mm -hmm. right? And you know I always say um, you're only competing with yourself. You are in that arena comp competing with a lot of other applicants. Right, so the best thing for you to do is to work out these areas that you do need building up on. Yeah. And you do need to actually get help on this as well. If you've got the application, work with someone on it mm. at the same time. Because it doesn't mean because, all right, so there might be an error here, error there, that you can't do it. No, yeah. it doesn't. But sometimes it overlaps mentally. You start thinking, well, if I can't do that, how am I going to do the job as well? Mm. Not true. Not true. You know, I mean, <laughs> let's think about it. I'm not saying that. Academics doesn't matter. It does matter. It's very important. Yeah. But try telling that to someone like Richard Branson. Try telling that to someone like Albert Einstein. You know, um, something. Bill Gates. Mm -hmm. All these others as well who didn't finish off studies at a certain time, but broke through. Yeah. Right? Because of their ability and their drive and realising the areas that need to be developed, they can help on. And obviously, I would say, 
um, paying other people to do the work that they do as well. Mm -hmm. Right, but that's not for everybody at this stage right now. I'm not advocating it and say that's the way, they're the ones who champion it, so that's the way. But what I'm saying is that you can still forge ahead. It's not yeah. saying that's it and it's the end, you know? Different to before now, there's a lot of organisations, just like her, that will actually give that help. There's a lot of access. Yeah. We've got the internet as well. If there's anything you need to learn, it's there. Find out there's organisations all over the place. You know, you don't have to go, look, hey, it's me. I don't know how to do this. You can actually go and find out mm -hmm. and learn along the way. And I totally recommend that. I mean, I'm one for development all the time. And the area of development is not just developing here all round. There's many areas, but at the end of it, there's a root. There's mm -hmm. a root why we can't learn this and why we can't learn that. And sometimes we've got to unblock that root and find out what it was. Somebody yeah. might have said when he was younger, said, oh, you can't do that. Oh, don't be stupid. You know, something like that might be just, okay, they didn't mean it in a bad way. It's their vocabulary, the way they said yeah. it. That stupid word has stuck to that person for life. It's buried inside of there. So every time they go to do something else, they start thinking, oh, I'm clumsy, oh, I'm stupid, I can't do this, I can't do that. And right? sometimes they don't even bother trying to do anything exactly. else because that, that thought is still there. Yeah, and exactly. they don't want to reveal themselves yeah. as silly in any kind of way. <clears throat> but let me just say straight home, you're not silly, okay? I'm just gonna let you know that you are not silly, right? Because the thing about it, there are many great achievers who's gone beyond that, mm -hmm. far beyond anyone's expectation at the end of the day. So look at what's good, don't keep looking at what's wrong or what's yeah. lacking. But if you are going to look at what's lacking, don't look at it as weak, look at an area that I need to develop instead. Mm -hmm. yeah? I know actually there's a, a friend of a friend um, mm. who came to the UK, hardly speaks any English, can't write English or anything like that, and he, he managed to open a hotel chain. Wow. So, and that's wow. like without, and he didn't let that stop because of what he does, he just employs people to do the things that he right. can't, but he's got the brains, he's got the business brains and he knows, he knows how to talk to people, even though he can use a translator and stuff, but right. he knows how to sort of seal business deals and stuff like that, even though he can't write anything, but he can sign his name at least. So he's gotten so far ahead just because he really believes in himself and he doesn't let the, the lack of, you know, the English or even, I don't even know if he's properly educated anyway from where right. he's from, he doesn't let that stop him. You see, stories like that, <coughs> that really gives me a thrill. I love yeah. to hear stories like that because there's many people like that, but we tend to look at it and say, well, the word is I can't. Yeah. But if you compare, now let's put it, I don't know where he's from, your friend, but if you switch your mind over and think, well, if I was in their country, didn't speak the language, yeah. could I achieve that? That's a big That's thing a at the end thing. of the day. That's great, you know. Yeah. Take my hat off to that. Definitely, definitely. You know, I'd say on top of that as well, in the area I work with, um, let's say interviews, mm -hmm. I'd actually say to an individual, look, if you're going to go into a company, <coughs> find out everything you can about them before you go there, mm -hmm. right? Because you've got to educate yourself. Right, and you're there, here we go. We sit in a chair, we go to the interview. Before you sat in that chair, somebody else sat in that chair as well, right? And when you get up, somebody else is gonna come mm. and sit in this chair. So you've gotta make yourself different. So you haven't got time to start thinking, well, I can't do this, and my application like this, and this. you just gotta sell yourself, and yeah. sell yourself the best you can, with all the best qualities that you've got, all the best skills you've got, and everything that you know about that company. Even if they, you know what it is already, they're gonna ask you, you yeah. know it already. That in itself is gonna build your confidence. Listen, yeah. you sit in that chair, person coming in after, forget about them. That's what you meant to make them think, mm. forget about them. Not that you're gonna to go to an employer and say, hey, you know that person coming <laughs> after. No, but forget about them, because you're gonna be outstanding. And that's all you have gotta think about, is selling yourself. Get mm. rid of, I can't do this, I'm not good at that, I'm not good yeah. at that, right? Okay. Change the mind. What about when, um, when you're ready in work? Mm. And you know, how important it is to keep learning when you're even on the job already? Say so you bagged your dream job, what now? Very important, very important. If you think that you've bagged the dream job and that's it, right, I'm sitting pretty now, bills are paid, everything's great, forget it, you're on the way out. Because there's somebody else coming up who is gonna do a lot better, educate themselves, self-educate yeah. themselves, keep going, keep going, keep going, and you'll be working for them after, or you'll be moved out because they can't afford both of you at the same mm. time. So. I know I keep saying that at the same time, you're not in competition with anybody else, right? But that's what I'm talking about, development, developing yourself, yeah. right? But in this case, in the work field, you are, mm -hmm. you are. And you've got to keep educating yourself. You know, it's funny because any time I've got to do a topic or a subject or um, a talk or going to college or something like that, I find out so much information before. Really? I really do, yeah. yeah I, 
And the thing is, it's different. <coughs> Tell me, when I was younger, would I want to sit there, learn this information? No. That was me <laughs> then. No. Now I just love it. So I find out as much information as I can about the yeah. company where I'm going as much as I can, so I'll sell it at the end of the mm -hmm. day. I'll say exactly the same thing. It's different. They're actually in the company. They need to develop it. And you need to know that you're an asset to that company. Yeah. Yep, you need to be an asset to company. You need to make yourself valuable. How are you going to make yourself valuable? Updating yourself mm. all the way through. Keep educating yourself. Keep finding out. So Keep asking important. questions. Find out the background of company as well. Yeah. Here, here's the other one. Find out about their competitors. That's mm. a really good one as well. Learn Why? everything you can learn. Why? Why? About the because before you if go you, quickly. <laughs> okay. If you can find out about the competitors and what, why are they leading or what they're coming up with next, and you brought it to your company already, come on. You're sitting pretty. That's pretty Excellent good. advice, Chris. Thank you so, so much. <laughs> Thank you. It's a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you, and we'll see you again very soon. Okay. Great. All right, guys, so up next, my helpful tips on how to grab opportunities to learn, which is a must for everyone young and more mature. So I'll see you in just a moment. Hi, I'm Chrissy B and my show is all about improving your mental health and being happy. Join me every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 10pm on my channel Sky203. Visit ChrissyBshow.tv for more information and subscribe to our YouTube channel Chrissy B Show. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Chrissy B Show and on our Facebook page The Chrissy B Show. Welcome back. It's International Literacy Day on the 8th of September and here at the Chrissy B Show we're doing our part to raise awareness about the importance and value of education. And now I want to share some of my top tips on how to grab opportunities to learn. Now when we think about learning and education we tend to think of young people, normally school age. But we want to encourage everyone, no matter your age, to learn something new. And in fact we did a whole show on this recently called Adults, Adults Learning Week. And if you've missed that episode, you can always head over to our YouTube channel, Chrissy B Show, subscribe to it and watch it all there. Now, learning something new, be it by studying or even a new hobby, is so good for your mental well-being and keeps your mind active and healthy. But there are opportunities to learn all around us, and here are a few ways how. So my first point is, learn from mistakes. So um, life is a great lesson um, in itself. So, you know, it's inevitable that you will make mistakes, I will make mistakes. And um, there's no problem in that because that's how we actually learn. But the important thing is that when we've made a mistake that we actually learn from it so as not to repeat the same thing again. And that's how we mature and that's how we grow. If we keep sort of, if we never learn from our mistakes, then uh, it's like we never progress in life or in relationships or anything else. And also it's important to also learn from other people's mistakes. So why should you kind of, for example, if you see a friend of yours or someone at work, make a mistake, get into trouble for it. You can learn from your friend's mistake or from your work colleague's mistake as well and say, okay, well, I, I saw what happened there. I'm going to learn from that and I won't do the same thing as they did because I don't want to get into trouble. So you can always learn from, from your mistakes and from other people's mistakes. My second point is, learn from the best. So I think it's a really good idea to hang around with people that have maybe more experience than you. And this can be people like mentors or advisors, and even sort of maybe friends and, and older people as well that have had more experience in life and they can kind of share advice with you and stuff. So um, if you kind of hang around with people that aren't going anywhere in life and they don't have any ambitions and they kind of just sailing through things and not really have a, any specific goal, it, it kind of, you kind of tend to follow suit as well if you're not a strong, like a strong person. But if you're, if you're surrounded by people, and this could even be with people at work, you can choose who you hang around with at work as well. So if you see someone that's very ambitious and, you know, they have lots of ideas, why not kind of link to them a little bit and try and learn from them and learn from their drive? And it's something that will be beneficial to you rather than just hanging around with people that gossip all day. How's that going to help you? It's not going to help you at all. So there are, there are opportunities all around you in that respect too. 
The third point is, what, which is what I touched on briefly just now, learn from your friends as well. So apart from hanging around with friends that are really ambitious, another kind of friend that you can learn from is a friend that's very truthful. So um, maybe they will, these kind of friends, um, which I love to have around me, and I have one that's, you know, she's always telling me off about something, you know, she's, cause she, she's, she likes to be really helpful and stuff. But, um, these kind of friends speak up when they see something in you maybe that isn't quite good or that needs to change, even something, a flaw in your character even, and they, they will tell you about those things. So I think these kind of friends are very special because not everyone will kind of sit you down or say the truth to your face. And that's what we need sometimes because there are times when we don't see our own flaws, we don't see our own mistakes, we, we have certain character traits that aren't good that maybe... Um, affect other people negatively and we don't see that because maybe that's kind of something that we've developed from childhood or things that we've bad habits that we've picked up along the way but when you have these kind of friends that tell you the truth and tell you how it affects them and affects others it's something so so helpful and I don't think we should get offended by that or say you know who is that person to tell me about myself we should actually appreciate the honesty that they have because it's not easy to tell someone these kind of things so it's really really good to learn from these kind of friends so that you can develop and learn and you know become educated in other ways as well and you know have better relationships with people too my fourth point is learn outside of your comfort zone so um you, you know, to be honest, you'll learn little or nothing by staying in your safe place. So you really do need to step out and do things that you're not comfortable with. And sometimes people don't do that because they're afraid of making mistakes. But you know what? You're going you're gonna to make mistakes anyway. That's how you will learn, as we said earlier. So you, you won't learn anything by playing it safe all the time, by not taking any kind of risks. And this show, for example, in particular, this, this was completely out of my comfort zone when I first started. And, but it's opened up such a whole new world for me. And even just maybe researching the topics that I do and you know the different things that we talk about on the show, I've learned so much. So it's really, really good to, to be out of your comfort zone because that is a fantastic uh, learning ground for you. And the fifth point is learn from the free stuff. So I don't think anyone has an excuse you know not to not to be able to learn new things because we have so many free things especially here in the UK we have the libraries everyone has the internet you can research stuff so for example if in my particular case if there's a word that I don't understand maybe I hear it on the news or I'm watching a program and I don't know what it means I would I normally look it up straight away because I don't want to miss miss it and forget the word so I'll look it up and I'll, I'll, I'll you know I'll, I'll try and learn what that word means and how to use it in a certain context and sometimes I ask my husband if he's around you know if, if there's something that I, there's something going on in the news that I don't understand I know what's happening there I always ask him because I like to know I like to learn new things so there are opportunities all around us to learn Okay, so just to recap the tips again, so easy ways to learn. The first one is to learn from your mistakes and also from others' mistakes. Learn from the best, so surround yourself with people that are motivated, that they're independent and they go for things. Learn from your friends, you know, those, those kind of honest friends that we all like to have. And also learn outside of your comfort zone. If you play it safe all the time, you'll learn absolutely nothing. And also the fifth point was learn from the free stuff, which is all around us. All right, guys, so a final point I want to make, and there is some research from the BBC website that shows that your brain is very sensitive and it constantly needs to repair itself and build new connections between the cells as you learn new things. Now, to do this, it needs top-class nutrition, a steady supply of energy, a steady supply of oxygen, and time asleep to do all its updating. For general brain health, you need to eat a balanced diet containing plenty of fresh fruit and vegetables, and every other part of your body will also benefit from it. So having taken all of that into consideration, here's a simple and effective energy juice recipe from our lovely nutritionist, Hannah Richards. Hello and welcome to Hannah's Kitchen. My name's Hannah and today we're going to be doing some medicinal juicing. Now there's a lot that goes on about juicing. There's lots that's written in magazines, that's on TV shows. But today I'm going to give you the ins and outs about juicing and how really juicing can help you and help you heal your health as well. So 
The first juice we're going to do today is one called the Energizing Juice, and it's a fantastic way to start your day. Let's go through the ingredients. We've got some mint, which is really refreshing. It's one of those herbs that really gets you up and going. We've got some apple for some sweetness. We've got ginger, which is great for your digestive system, gets everything moving. I'm gonna use some cucumber for hydration, so you really hydrate your body first thing in the morning. And then we've got beetroot, which is going to give the juice its bright purple color. Beetroot has a number of uh, nutritional values to it. It's full of vitamin A, vitamin C, loads of iron. It's one of the best vegetables also for clearing the body's detoxification system. So if you need to support your liver, then beetroot is a great vegetable in which to do that. Now this is a cold pressed juice, so it involves some manual labor. So don't worry about the beetroot juice staining anywhere. See, there's all the pulp that sometimes if you buy a juice in the shops, you'll see on the back that it contains pulp and that just fills it up a little bit, but we don't want that. Um, so there's the beautiful red juice. Beautiful way to start the day. Thank you very much, Hannah. I hope that in today's show we've highlighted just how vital it is to value education and how grateful we should be to be able to do something as simple as to read and write, but that also there are opportunities all around us to learn and improve too. Now, if you are able to, I, I encourage you to get involved with charities and organisations that help those who are less fortunate or those who are unable to have an education for whatever the reason. So let's all help raise awareness on International Literacy Day. And sadly, that's all we have time for tonight. But if you have a story to tell us, an experience to share, to help educate, inspire and motivate others, do get in touch on the details below. Also, you can let us know your thoughts and advice on any subject by tweeting us at Chrissy B Show or commenting on our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. So guys, I really hope you've enjoyed the show today. Until next time, bye-bye for now. Right, three, two, one. Thank you very much, Jenny. And up next, we'll be meeting Policy Research Officer. Was it right? <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there, don't worry. You got it right. <laughs>